This is Little Boy, the atomic bomb that devastated Hiroshima. This is Castle Bravo, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated by the United States. And this, this is RDS-220, also known as Tsar Bomba, the emperor of all bombs. Built in the Soviet Union, it was dubbed Big Ivan. Recently, Russia declassified footage of its 1961 detonation. At 50 megatons, Tsar Bomba remains the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated, the most powerful human-made explosion in history. It was about 3,800 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. If dropped on a major city, the devastation would be unimaginable, and if not for a last-minute decision, it could have been twice as powerful, twice as catastrophic. The lead physicist behind it was so disturbed by his creation that he spent the rest of his life campaigning against nuclear weapons. This is the shocking little-known story of Tsar Bomba. The late 1950s, the Cold War is at its peak. The United States and the Soviet Union are locked in a nuclear arms race, but the Americans are ahead. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev knows it. Tensions had eased slightly in recent years. In 1958, the U.S. and U.S.S.R. agreed to a voluntary moratorium on nuclear testing. There was even hope for lasting peace. A 1960 summit in Paris was meant to formalize a test ban treaty. Then, everything fell apart. Just days before the summit, the Soviets shot down an American U-2 spy plane. The U.S. initially claimed it was a weather aircraft, but the Soviets had proof. It was a CIA espionage mission. The captured pilot confessed. It was a PR disaster for the U.S. At the summit, Khrushchev was furious. He demanded an apology. President Eisenhower refused. Khrushchev stormed out. No treaty was signed. And the Soviet leader decided to prove his country's strength in the most dramatic way possible. By 1961, John F. Kennedy was the new U.S. president. Khrushchev saw him as weak, an opportunity to assert Soviet dominance. So he summoned his top nuclear scientists. The moratorium was over. It was time to resume testing. Among them was Andrei Sakharov, the father of the Soviet hydrogen bomb. But Sakharov was growing uneasy. He had calculated that every megaton of nuclear testing would lead to thousands of premature deaths due to radiation. He pleaded with Khrushchev. Wasn't it enough to have the bombs as deterrents? Did they really need to test them? Khrushchev was unmoved. He dismissed Sakharov's concerns and demanded ideas for new weapons. Someone suggested an unprecedented 100 megaton bomb. Khrushchev loved it. The most powerful bomb ever tested was the U.S.'s Castle Bravo at 15 megatons. For context, all explosives used in World War II, combined, amounted to about 3 megatons. The effects of such a colossal bomb were unknown. Some scientists feared it could trigger global catastrophe. But Khrushchev didn't care. The goal wasn't military strategy. It was intimidation. The world would see Soviet power hanging over them like a sword of Damocles. Sakharov, despite his opposition, was put in charge. If it had to be built, he wanted it to be as safe as possible. The timeline was brutal, just 16 weeks from concept to detonation. By October 1961, Tsar Bomba was ready. It was massive. Eight meters long, 25 tons. Too large for missiles, it had to be dropped from a specially modified bomber. Even then, the crew had only a 50% chance of survival. To improve their odds, the bomb was fitted with a massive parachute to slow its descent. But before the test, Sakharov made a fateful decision. He proposed replacing uranium-238 with lead, reducing the yield from 100 to 50 megatons. It would still be the most powerful explosion ever, but with significantly less radioactive fallout. Khrushchev agreed. The world would still see its potential. On October 30th, 1961, the bomber ascended to 10 kilometers over the Arctic test site at Novaya Zemlya. At 1132 Moscow time, Tsar Bomba was released from 4,000 meters above the ground. 
For a brief moment, silence. Then, light. A flash visible from 1,000 kilometers away. So intense it could cause blindness from 80 kilometers. Then, heat. Temperatures reached 100 million degrees Celsius, hotter than the sun's core. The fireball expanded to nearly 5 kilometers wide, consuming everything in its path. Then, the blast. The mushroom cloud soared 64 kilometers into the sky, seven times higher than Mount Everest. The shockwave encircled the globe three times. Buildings 55 kilometers away were destroyed. Windows shattered as far as Finland. The bomber itself was nearly downed, dropping a kilometer from the blast wave. Miraculously, the crew survived. Despite its unprecedented power, Tsar Bomba had no real military purpose. It was too large, too impractical. But its message was clear. The world reacted with horror. Protests erupted. Even the U.S., while publicly condemning it, secretly considered developing a similar bomb. In 1963, the U.S. and USSR signed the Partial Test Ban Treaty, banning atmospheric nuclear tests. Many credit Tsar Bomba for pushing them to act. Sakharov, haunted by his role, became a leading advocate against nuclear proliferation. In 1975, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. The Soviet government forbade him from leaving the country to accept it. Today, Tsar Bomba remains a grim reminder of human destruction. But while it was the largest bomb ever detonated, it was not the largest ever planned. Recently declassified documents reveal that in the 1950s, the U.S. considered even larger bombs. One project, Doomsday Device, aimed for 1,000 megatons. Another, Sundial, was designed for an unthinkable 10,000 megatons, enough to burn an entire continent. Most scientists were horrified. Some believed such a blast could render Earth uninhabitable. Ultimately, the projects were abandoned. But Tsar Bomba remains a testament to the terrifying extremes of the Cold War. A weapon so powerful that its only purpose was to prove it could be built. And in proving that, humanity came dangerously close to the brink of destruction.